Good morning. Uh, today I'm going to talk about nine ways that quitting alcohol optimizes your mental health. We did a video a couple of weeks ago about the, the physical aspects of this. We did five ways then, but you know, this is, I think this is the most important part of this for me, this whole journey. Um, you know, if you're a drinker, you probably don't want to hear a lot of what I'm about to say to you, but you know, I come from a place of love. And one of the biggest lessons um, for making these videos for me is to try and inspire people to step across that line and to really get rid of this toxin out of their, out of their system altogether, you know, once and for all. So, you know, it's difficult to face up to, to the opposite of this, that if stopping drinking alcohol is going to create or optimize all these good things in your life, then the opposite is also true, that drinking alcohol creates these problems. And you'll see as I'm going through this, you'll recognize some of these in your own life. So hopefully you're looking to get the poison out of your life, but you just don't know um, how to do it, right? Um, I was there where you are now. There's a, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of inexperience in this journey. There's a lot of stuff that you just don't know. You know, it's the hardest thing for me is to get my clients to to get that experience of the first 30 days or the first 90 days or whatever it is to get them to believe in themselves. I mean, if I could show you at the end of 90 days or the end of a year, if I could take you out to a year and show you the improvements that will happen in your life, the massive improvements that will happen in your life. If you stop drinking alcohol and you start working on your life, um, you would do it straight away. There will be no hesitation. The conflict would disappear, but I can't do that, right? I can explain things to you, but I can't take you out there yourself, right? Now, I drank for over 30 years. Um, so anything that I talk about in any of these videos is backed up by personal experience. I have done it. Plus, I've spent most of my days since I stopped drinking alcohol um, thinking about the habit, thinking about drinking, thinking about how people get hooked into it, how people can get hooked out of it. Right, and hooked on to the better things in their lives. You know, I've had many thousands of coaching calls. I think we did a, um, a sum up and probably about eight and a half thousand coaching calls I've had up until this point, right? So I have a lot of experience dealing with this. Um, the point is that you, when you've been dealing with it over that space of time, you start to see patterns, uh, inevitabilities on both sides of it, right? You see the patterns and inevitabilities on one side, stopping drinking and on the other side of people how you know moderation for instance keeps people hooked into that mentality uh, and probably solidifies them more than if they have the idea well i do want to stop someday right you know i think these are some of the most important outcomes that you can have the mental outcomes you know that i see from uh, from a mental health perspective you know soundness of mind you know, looking at your life from a very reasonable perspective without the toxin being there, right? You know, your own life above all, being content with yourself and being content with where you're going in life. So let's cover these nine things. First of all, anxiety and overall stress. And I'm including social anxiety and stress in this as well, because that's something that I was... Uh, that I had, but just personal anxiety, anxiety about, I had anxiety about the most stupid fucking things when I was drinking, you know, because small problems become magnified, you know, alcohol creates those problems in the first place, but it also, um, there's a lot of problems in your life where the problems that you already have become unresolved or are unresolved. So that creates an accumulation of problems, an accumulation of stress, an accumulation of anxiety. You know, look at that first video that I did. If you go back, if you look at the list of videos that I've got and just sort them by day order, you go back to the first, first few videos, all right? And, you know, when I look at that, I just see the pent up stress from years of, um, you know, I'd stopped drinking, so there was a hope there, but, <laughs> there was a load of shit that I had to sort out, right? And 
when you look at those, when I look at those videos now, um, I don't look at them often. It's very difficult for me to look back at that time, but I see how I'm gradually relaxing, gradually just chilling. And you can see my, you know, just the, the whole demeanor relaxing. And then I go back to the first year video and, you know, it's visibly different, you know, I'm visibly more happier. I'm you know, 60 or 70 pound lighter. You know, I'm more peaceful, more contented in my life. I'm more happy uh, with my own uh, self-efficacy. You know, that no matter what happens in my life, I know I can deal with this stuff. Um, so again, stopping drinking alcohol is, is a major part of the puzzle. It creates a foundation, but it's not, um, it's not everything. It depends what you do after you stop drinking alcohol. That's what matters, you know. A lot of people can't get past, you know, from my perspective, like I said, I've had a lot of coaching calls and one of the things that I see most often is people can't get past that initial disorientation, that confusion in the beginning, you know, and some of that lasts longer, but it depends on the person, it depends on the problems that you have, it depends on your, your thinking, you know, what types of things you're anxious about. So, but it's all dealable it's all you can deal with all this stuff the second thing i'll go on to is that a lot of this depends on changing your values and beliefs and this is something that i've worked on over the years didn't realize it at the beginning it take, took me probably i'd say three or four years to to come to grips that a lot of the underlying the foundational stuff that i was basing my thinking on was wrong right those values um you need a clear mind for that but you need you, know, you need to work through certain problems you need to get rid of certain problems so that's they're not hindering you that up front and personal in your mind um everything that you do everything that you believe is based on those values right everything that you that you think is based on the beliefs that you have about yourself about the world about how you're operating in the world about how the world operates around you you know about your own levels of control you know for me i've got i split these up into two different types of values there's aspirational values and the real values so you know aspirational values might be well i love the environment but what are you doing in real life for the environment you know i, I saw a great picture yesterday of um environmentalists going to glastonbury festival and talking about um the environment and all this kind of stuff and um how the the world is going to hell in the in the handbasket and then you see a picture of the fucking mess that these people left after them a disgrace you know so it's real values for me are looking at my life as a drinker and saying to myself um i value getting drunk more than i do health you know real values are i value the taste, the immediate gratification of fast food rather than my health. Do you get what I mean? So these are all things that are the part and parcel of your growth, the part and parcel of your of who you're going to be, who you are now, but who you're going to be in in a year's time or ten years' time. Now, I've done a lot of work on these values and principles and, and beliefs over the years, and I've got a whole set. I've built a whole set of uh, kind of new and improved beliefs and values that help me to grow um, and it's an ongoing process you know sometimes if I if I know I'm going in the wrong direction if I know something is going wrong and I don't I don't understand why that's the first place that I look is what are my beliefs what are my values and how are they um, how are they making a difference in, in where I am the next one um, is money um, and you might not think that this is a mental health thing right but I think if you if you can earn more, if you're saving more, if you're not worried about money, um, you've got less worries overall, right? You've got more time to think about your problems and um, less time to do, uh, less time to, to worry about things that you shouldn't be worrying about, right? You know, when I didn't have money, I wanted money badly because, you know, we were stuck. You know, when I started out making, uh, making these videos, you know, we, we were, I had a, a moped 
Um, between the two of us, between myself and Esther, we were. So when I started making decent money, I realized that, um, you know, money is not the most important thing in your life, but having money is an important thing to relax you, to, um, to help you to feel good. You know, it's not in the top five for me um, of things now, but that's because I, I've got a bit of, I've got that cushion in the bank, right? I've got that cushion in my life. I know that um, I can make money now, you know? So, you know, however, that whole thing, when you you make more money, um, for me, it just gives you more time. It gives you, uh, you, you can use your time better. You can use your energy better. It reduces your overall worries. And when you reduce your overall worries, you're just more contented. You're more focused on what matters, on the better outcomes. And that is, um, I think it's super important for your mental health, you know? So, and again, this stuff is not going to happen straight away. It, it takes time. It takes time to put yourself into a, a different position where you can you can earn more money where you you are more valuable to other people so that you can earn more money from that perspective another thing that i that i stopped doing was just hanging around with drinkers you know that did wonders for my mental health you know i stopped hanging around with people who were trying to um sabotage what i was doing you know those energy vampires and i know it's harsh to say you know some of the people that are in your life now are people that you need to get rid of um not physically but you know like gradually over time you know some people are just going to disappear from your life because you don't stop because you stop drinking alcohol and that's just the way of it you know um but like i said these are people who are going to take from your life rather than give and friendships for me um are all about trying to have a balance between what somebody gives you and what somebody takes from your life and you know i include myself in all of this right you know at least my past self i was a, a self saboteur when i was drinking and um i'm sure there was plenty of times when i tried to convince other people to drink more than what they should have been doing or to um oh you don't need to stop drinking alcohol just cut back you know um like i said when i was when I was uh, 46 years of age, I was broke, 46. Um, you know, having just that, I, I was working for a dollar per article. That's what I was doing. I was writing articles when we first moved to Spain. Um, you know, we we'd kind of built a business up. The business was kind of a flop. Um, a lot of it not because of what we were doing in, in our own lives, but you know, from outside, but obviously, you know, drinking, when you're drinking, you haven't got to, you haven't got the time to spend on the things that you need to spend on if you're running a business. Uh, Esther, my partner, she was working for two fifty an hour, two dollars or two euros fifty an hour. So $25 for a, 25 euros for a shift in a, an Indian restaurant, you know, that's just it. So I was coming close towards the end of that period. You know, I, I'd left a lot of my mates back in Ireland, but I was getting back to um, finding friends who were drinkers, who I could go out drinking with, right? Birds of a feather flock together. That would have been a disaster for me. So that's just the fact, you know, if you can get rid of the people who are damaging in your life, that will do a lot for your mental health. Now, some of you know that um, over the last while we've been, we've stopped posting a lot on YouTube. So we're doing one video every, every couple of weeks now. Um, a lot of reasons for that. Mostly it's because I'm not able to publish what I want to publish, not just because of censorship or anything like that, but because of the algorithm, the way the algorithm works. And I'm just, uh, I was tired of, of spending a lot of time working on the videos, working on the out, the things that were outside of the content, you know, the making the videos look nice, you know, doing the thumbnails, all that kind of stuff. So what we've done is we've moved all the videos. So if you want daily videos, um, uncensored, unfiltered, just like these, you'll get audios as well. Um, and we've also got a private place where you can, you know, there is no fear of saying what you want to say, you know, um, where you can leave your comments, uh, go to unplugged365. Um, we've already got a big community there. We've only, it's only been a week uh, we've got a huge community over there so yeah i'm really delighted about that so come on over there and um i'll speak to you there okay the next one is just to get um i found myself um if i look at myself now i'm a much more serious man than i was um, back then serious about 
how I spend my time, serious about how I spend my energy, my uh, serious about who I'm with, serious about th the kind of things that I'm that cause me uh, anxiety, right? The kind of things that worry me, you know, uh, and I can't help it, right? I, you know, I'm just living. Um, if you want to live a good life, right, you've got to you've got to be serious about the business of living a good life, you know, of be serious about being contented. You know that it, it takes you have to work at these things right having fun being fun enjoying the moment these are all things that you know they're they're great when if you if that's your focus um you know it's great when you're a teenager or you know you go to college at first you know but you know when you're when you're trying to do something in your life when you're trying to make a difference then all of that kind of stuff has to go out the window i'm not saying that you can't have fun uh you can't be fun you can't enjoy the moment that's part and parcel of having a contented life but the big problem is if that instant gratification becomes a mindset becomes the the reason for living you know how many times i used to say to myself well you only live once so you might as well extract the most fun out of life and that's bullshit because it doesn't it's a dead end right you know life is not about working to just as a as a way of funding how much you can squeeze out of life how much enjoyment you can squeeze out of life i don't think that personally um because it it takes away from the things that create that um that great life that you want to live you know that great life does take work and it, it just depends on what you're working at when i was when i was drinking i was working out of desperation so i was working to try and keep up the that squeeze that habit Right? And when I stopped drinking, then I was able to start focusing my mind on, um, I realized that the more I focused my mind on enjoying my work, on doing the things during the day within my work that I enjoyed, pursuing things that I enjoyed in a, in a much wider context, then I was able to sit down and relax better, relax more, um, relax, um, you know, just do better things in my life, you know, much less anxiety, much more patience, much more perseverance in my life. Um, so, you know, my, my long-term future, when I was drinking, all I had isolated for myself were these shallow moments um, and there was nothing to back them up. So it's only when I stop drinking alcohol that you start to get a bit of depth in your life. Um, the next one is that you need to get away from the external drugs in order for the internal drugs to work. Right, so the dopamine, serotonin, uh, um, all those things that make you feel good, that give you purpose in life. You know, those are. It's hugely important to have um, to have good mental health, to have these operating. And the problem when you're taking external drugs, they um, it, it's like processed foods. You know, you're you're having a false high. You're having a false. Um, it has a false effect on these things in your life. So. It's only when you stop drinking or stop taking drugs, you know, and I probably should include caffeine in that, which I still drink. Um, I, I've stopped taking sugar. So that's one of the, I mean, that, that was a huge thing for me rather than caffeine. I think it was more deleterious to my life than caffeine, but alcohol was definitely one. Nicotine was another one that I had in my life. Um, I've taken a lot of other drugs, but I always knew that other drugs were uh you know co cocaine for instance or um acid or i've taken a uh, small bit of e at one stage in my life and all of these things i knew were were bad and were not going to lead to good outcomes so i stopped doing them right i didn't do much of them. um and it's only when i stopped alcohol that i started and you have to have patience with this right you start to uh, the dopamine levels start to balance out the serotonin starts to balance out and you start to get natural hits from the the things that you're supposed to get hits from in life that is essential for your mental health and um, there's no two ways about it um another one number seven is just more time um more patience you know more focus on uh other people in your life and more focus on the other people in your life not on um as i said earlier it's it's not just in in putting the time and energy into people it's putting the time and energy into people that are reciprocating you know who give him back you know i love being with other people but it it's not when i'm in with other people that counts for me it's when i'm on my own and um you know when i wake up in the middle of the night in the dark what thoughts are going through my mind 
you know, am I happy with these things in my life? Am I happy with um, with the people I have, the relationships in my life that I have? You know, this is all part and parcel of that. When you're with other people, it can often distract you from your own thoughts. It's like alcohol, you know. Um, part of that, again, is down to who I hang out with, right? The people I hang out, out with are going to have a huge influence on my mind, on the direction that I take in my, my life, on my thoughts, on my actions. Um, you know, it's just how we're built. It's how our brains are wired to seek out other people. You know, it's that deep, deep programming that um, that we can't change. You know, so you can change the surface stuff, who you're with, you can think about these things, you can use your mind um, and not your emotions with people. So um, that's that, you know, it's just, I think people are an important thing. Uh, number eight is to say no. Uh, to say no to alcohol first of all um, and once you say no to alcohol you start to say no to other things you start to see how your life is improving just by making this one thing and then you think to yourself right if my life is improving from that one area how is it going to improve by me making changes in my exercise routines or you know starting to exercise or how how am I going to improve myself if I look at my nutrition how am I going to improve myself if I start to look at how I'm sleeping and what's affecting my sleep? Uh, how am I going to improve myself if I start looking at um, the amount of bullshit that I'm putting into my mind from outside sources of things that I have no control about, right? You know, you, you don't just benefit from the absence of alcohol, but from the absence of all the bullshit that goes with alcohol, all the bullshit people, all the, you know, I used to, to eat the biggest amounts of crap, you know, uh, come out of the pub and go straight into the fast food places and eat greasy, horrible, crappy foods that, again, were, are designed to hook you, to put you into more addiction. Uh, number nine is discomfort. You have to have discomfort in, in life in order to have good mental health. And I'm talking about, you know, before you're able to feel comfortable, once you're, uh, once you're comfortable and you, you haven't got all these problems, you know, or you know you're on the road to sorting out these problems, then you start to grow. Then you start to push yourself forward. You know, you have to put yourself in the discomfort before you feel comfortable, truly comfortable. I mean, that comfort zone that we're in, think about it, of alcohol, how is that comfort? It's not, you know? So that discomfort, deliberate discomfort is good for your mental health. You know, you experience negative emotions, you deal with those negative emotions and that's the path towards growth. And like I said, it's not wild negatives of drinking, uh, the discomfort from that, but it's the controlled, putting yourself into controlled situations. You know, you're forcing a discomfort almost because you're saying to yourself, right, um, I'm, I'm going to make myself a little bit uncomfortable here. Uh, just a little bit. So, you know, if you if you look at your life like, you know, you've got this comfort zone and you, you step outside a little bit, you put sort of a little part of your body outside of it and you feel uncomfortable, but gradually you, you get comfortable in that new situation. Then you move a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. So it's discomfort with purpose. You've got an aim at the end of it. It's something that you're trying to head towards. Um, you know, you want to get something out of this. So, you know, there's purpose. Right? When you're aiming at something, you know, what I'm trying to get people to learn is that um, we've got consistent outcomes with any habit. So you've got consistent outcomes with an alcohol habit. And most of those consistent outcomes are going to be negative or prove to be negative, more negative in the, in the long run. So what we're looking for is consistent positive outcomes. And the only way that you get that is to grow, make certain things habitualized, look at your beliefs, look at your values. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, look at the hangover discomfort, for instance, it takes you nowhere. Uh, discomfort with purpose takes you anywhere that you want to go, right? So without alcohol in your system, your body is going to look after itself for the most part. You know, you can help it along with as I said earlier on, looking at your exercise, looking at your sleep routine, looking at your um, how much water you're consuming, looking at how much, uh, what different types of food you're eating, all those kind of things, you can help it. But the mind is different. The mind, mental well-being, 
requires work, you know. Um, in the beginning, you're still operating, you know, even for the first weeks and months, if you're not doing anything to, to change the underlying metrics, the underlying uh, thinking, the underlying mindsets, the values, the beliefs, um, your old habit is still laying there underneath the, sur uh, the, the surface. So you have to do that. You have to change that underlying program, the old programming. Work on what you do depends on the outcome that you want, those consistent outcomes again. You know, so when we're looking at mental health, it, it's, um, when I'm talking about mental health and what I mean by it, it's feeling contented with life, feeling contented with yourself, being patient, being able to persevere through challenges and come out the other side um, glowing, you know, being positive, having a, um, a good perspective on your life. This is what we talk about all the time in the, in the main Habits on Plug program, is that four Ps. Um, patience, perseverance, positivity and perspective. And perspective is the most important thing. It's taking yourself up above everything and looking down and seeing, being able to see what changes need to be made. You know, changing mindsets. None of, none of this happens overnight. You know, but there are better ways of thinking. Um, takes often new skills, new perspectives to do that. Um, but, you know, start as you mean to go on with this thing. As soon as you find yourself thinking about alcohol uh, in the early days, just push those thoughts away, you know. Don't do it with feeling sorry for yourself or having pity about yourself. Um, don't do it with sadness or anger. Just push it away um, with a positivity about where you're going, where you're heading in life, the positive places that you're going to end up with. Redirect your mind towards thinking about the possibilities that are open to you now. Uh, to the potential that you have opened just by doing that one thing, right? You know, there's no point in thinking that stopping drinking alcohol is doing something wrong, that any of this journey is doing something wrong. You know, don't look at this like it's something that you've been forced to do. You know, when I look back at the first year, first couple of years of this journey, I wish I'd have thought this way. I wish I'd have, um, I wish I'd have, you know, had these, these, tools at my disposal because things would have been a lot better a lot easier um you know i can obviously go back to the beginning and think i never i wish i'd never fucking drank at all but you know th that's not reality i have to deal with reality and reality is i drank for over 30 years um but it doesn't matter you know that what what happened in the past you were where you were because of all the things that you've done all the things that you've thought in the past and anything else is just um, trying to wish that away is not going to do anything for your mental health. Regretting any of that is not going to do anything for your mental health. You know, regret is just worry in the opposite direction. That's all. So it only ha matters what happens now. So let's open up your potential bit by bit, unfold in your life, change something small, do something positive. You know, this is, this is how you should focus your mind in the beginning is just to, th to focus on those things. You know, all I could do in the beginning, all I could do to focus my mind was to walk. It was something that um, I had ingrained in me from a child by my dad. So, and I walked a lot, but it, it helped. Uh, even though I was only walking in circles sometimes, you know, walking somewhere five or 10 kilometers away and walking back again. Those walks gave me a sense that I was going somewhere in my mind, right? That I was figuring things out very slowly. You think sometimes you're making pace and other times you're, you're, you're stepping backwards, but it is slow progress. Now those walks cleared my mind. They, they set me slowly on the right path and that's all you can ask. You know, I'm 11 years into this journey now and, um, you know, I'm here to help you in any way that I can, you know, whether that's through these videos that we're going to be doing here, um, come over to uh, Unplug365. It's the price of a cup of coffee, right? It's not expensive. We've got a $1 trial as well for the Habits Unplug program, so we can help you there. You know, it's probably the best place I can help you in terms of sequential help day by day, gradually unfolding this journey for you. You know, um, I look back on those first couple of months for me, like it was, I was on this kind of a wonky bridge. You know, it was shaky, it was not constructed well at all. Um, it was a bridge that I was, I was building as I was going across the bridge, you know, you know, you're just up in the air, nothing is real. Uh, you're neither here nor there. You're neither a drinker anymore, but you're, 
you're not a non-drinker yet, right? You haven't moved on. It's kind of a no man's land that you're in. But, you know, one day comes and you see the other side and you start to feel that you're, you know, you're becoming something. You're, you're that personality, that identity that you're creating or you're trying to create is starting to, to form itself and become cogent and coherent, you know? Uh, and again, you keep moving on, you're laying bricks, the bridge is becoming more stable as you're going across. Um, and finally, you know, one day you lay that final brick and you step off that wonky bridge and there you are, you're on solid ground, you're in that new person, you're in that new personality that you're, you feel integral again. You know, you feel good, you feel confident about the new person that you've been building this new life that has been, been built in this new life and has, you know, what you've been creating all, all throughout this journey. And it's just a great place to be. You've got a very solid foundation for what comes next. And I think it's that solid foundation. It's, it's looking at your physical well-being. Um, you know, you need to get that sorted out. Um, if you want to get your mental well-being sorted out, you have to think that, well, yeah, I'm going somewhere and I'm, I'm healthy. I'm, I'm taking myself in a healthy direction. But the mental well-being takes work. Uh, it all takes work, but it's work well, well worth doing. And, you know, you're heading towards those consistent positive outcomes that we were talking about earlier. So, listen, I'll leave it there for today. This is probably a really, really long video now at this stage. Um, I can't see the timer, but uh, yeah, take care of yourself. Uh, remember, if you want daily videos, uh, Unplugged 365, price of a cup of coffee, really cheap. Um, and uh, we talk a lot about this stuff, a lot of videos like this where I'm rambling on and ranting on, but, you know, there's a... Um, take you in a good direction and uh, there's a $1 trial on Habits Unplugged so have a look at that as well. Take great care of yourself and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Onwards and upwards. Keep the alcohol out of your mouth. Bye now. Mm -hmm.